What do you think of when I say artificial intelligence? Now this talk is pre-recorded, so I'm not going to get to ask you, but I can guess. Because it's probably something like this, or this, or maybe even this. Now these are the kinds of pictures that came up when I did a search for artificial intelligence, and that's a shame. In the next 15 minutes, I want to try and give you a better picture of what AI is, and I want to encourage you to think about how it's used. Now I spend a lot of time working with schools, so instead of using examples from companies like IBM, I'm going to show you projects that children in schools have made, and I'm going to explain a bit about what I think they mean. To start with, a project to control a fan and a lamp by giving commands. Now there are four commands that this class wanted the computer to learn how to recognise. Uh, to turn a fan on and to turn a fan off, and to turn a lamp on and to turn a lamp off. That meant they needed to collect examples of how you would ask each of those four commands. They needed to think of how they might ask a person to turn a fan on. So that means things like, uh, please can you turn on the fan? Um, switch on the fan for me. Uh, I'd like the fan on now. Um, turn on the fan. Or even things like, uh, it's hot in here, I'm boiling. They collected a dozen or so examples for each of the commands they wanted the computer to recognize, a dozen different ways to say each of these four commands. And then they used those examples to train what's called a machine learning model. They used that machine learning model in Scratch, and that meant they could phrase their instruction any way they want, including lots of ways that they hadn't even included in the examples that they'd used to train the computer. Because that machine learning model that they had trained had learned how to recognize the instructions based on the choice of words and the use of language, and that allowed them to control the devices. What they'd made was a smart assistant. And if you've got a Google Home or a Siri or a Cortana or an Amazon Alexa, then you've got one of these yourselves. And this is how they're made. Designers predict what commands they think users will give. They collect lots of examples of how to give those commands, and they use those examples to train a machine learning model. And then they script what the system should do when it recognizes a command. Let me show you another example. Now this one was a project about owls. Uh, so the class came up with a few things, uh, types of things that they thought someone might want to ask about owls, like uh, what sort of things do they eat? Or whereabouts in the world do they live? or how long do they live, or how many species of owls are there, or how big do owls grow to. So like before, they needed to come up with a bunch of examples of how you can ask each of those questions. And they used those examples to make a machine learning model. And this time they used that machine learning model to make a chatbot. They made something that you can ask questions about owls to. Now this idea of a chatbot uh, they're becoming increasingly common. Um, we see shops using them to answer customers' questions about products or to take orders. Um, we see banks using them to let people manage their accounts and much, much more. There are even chatbots for kids now. Um, Talk to Tina the T-Rex is a great one. It's a way to learn about dinosaurs, uh, but to learn about dinosaurs by asking one questions. And it was made in the exact same way. This is another project that I've seen lots of classes do. Instead of recognizing what text means, they train a computer to recognize the sentiment of text, uh, the emotion, the tone. So in this box on the left, they wrote examples of the kindest compliments they can think of. And in this box on the right, they wrote examples of the meanest insults that they could think of. And they used these to train a machine learning model. And they used that model to make a character that would react to what you say. So if you give this character a compliment, it recognizes that as a compliment based on the training that it's been given, and it smiles. If you give it an insult, if you say something mean to it, it recognizes that as an insult from the training it's been given, and it cries. That machine learning model that they had trained had learned to recognize the use of language in compliments and insults. It had learned to recognize the style of writing and the tone. So to recap, AI means we can train a computer to recognize text. We can train a computer to recognize the meaning of text, the, the style of text, the tone, the emotion, the sentiment of text. But it doesn't just mean that. 
because you can also train a computer to recognize numbers. So this is me playing Pac-Man, or at least a really simple uh, version of Pac-Man with only one ghost and, and no other obstacles in the maze. One way to think of Pac-Man is that it's a graph, because you can describe the location of Pac-Man or the ghost as a set of XY coordinates. And at any point in the game, Pac-Man has to decide what direction to move in next. Um, it has four choices. It can go up, down, left or right. So that means any stage in this simple game can be described as four numbers and a decision. So when I was here and the ghost was there, I decided to go up. And when I was here and the ghost was there, I decided to go down. Now I've helped schools to train computers to be able to do this. And what they need to do is train a computer to recognize when Pac-Man should go left, when it should go right, when it should go up, when it should go down. And like before, to train a machine learning model to do this, what they need to do is to collect examples. But instead of typing those examples in, they make games in Scratch to be able to do this. What this means is they play the game themselves. They've made this Scratch project, so they have to press the arrow keys to move Pac-Man around. And every time they press the button to control Pac-Man, not only are they controlling the character, but their decisions are being added to the training examples. By playing the game, they're collecting examples of when they thought it's best to go left, when they thought it's best to go right, and so on. And after playing for a while, they collected a lot of examples, and they used these examples to train a machine learning model. And then they can change their scratch game so that it's the machine learning model that's playing the game, instead of them pressing the arrow keys. That machine learning model has learned how to make the decision of, of what direction it's best for Pac-Man to go in. And they could see that Pac-Man learned what to do based on the training they gave it. They saw that the way it moved around the board, the strategies it used to avoid the ghost, were based on what the computer had learned from the examples that they collected. Now, artificial intelligence in games is not a new idea. In fact, it predates what you might think of as computers. In the 1960s, Donald Mitchie, an early AI researcher in the UK, showed that you could train a machine learning model to play noughts and crosses or, or tic-tac-toe. Now his examples were collected uh, as colored beads that he collected in tiny matchboxes and he had a matchbox for every possible state of a tic-tac-toe board. And he showed that you could train a system like this to learn how to play the game and to wink. So, AI can mean training a computer to recognize text, it can mean training a computer to recognize numbers, but that's still not all. AI can mean training a computer to recognize pictures as well. Now, the simplest example of this is training a computer to recognize what is in a picture. So I told this class that I was gonna give them a set of photos uh, and that every photo in that set was gonna be a photo of a car or a photo of a cup. I told them I wanted them to train a computer to be able to sort that set of photos out into two piles, a pile of car photos and a pile of cup photos. So they needed to train the computer to do this and they used the internet to collect photos of each. Uh, these were their examples, their training examples. They searched the internet to find examples of photos of cars and examples of photos of cups and they could use those examples to train a machine learning model to be able to recognize pictures. So they started by collecting uh, 10 photos of each. And then that was enough for them to make a start. Uh, their Scratch project tried each of the photos that I gave them uh, on their machine learning model. And if their model recognized it as a cup, it moved that photo to one side. If it recognized the photo as a car, it moved it to the other side. Now what this class made was an image classifier. And if you've ever used a website that can tag photos automatically based on what it thinks is in it, or if you've ever used an image search engine that can find you photos with something you want in it, then you've used a system a bit like what this class made. But it's not just about training a computer to recognize what is in a picture. AI systems can be trained to recognize visual styles. Now this class wanted to see if a computer could learn to recognize different genres of books based only on a picture of the book cover. Uh, could a computer judge a book by its cover? So they picked these four types of books and they looked for examples of book covers from each of these genres. 
So what they were looking for is examples of what a cover of a sci-fi book looks like. Uh, they were looking for examples of what a cover of a, a children's book looks like. Uh, examples that they could use to train a machine learning model with. Now these books don't all have the same thing on the cover. They weren't training the computer to recognize what was on the cover. That machine learning model that they trained will have picked up on things like uh, the color palette that was used, um, the font styles, uh, the font sizes, uh, the types of things that are on the cover. And they made a game in Scratch to see if the computer could be as good as they are at recognizing new books. And sure enough, the computer got almost every book they tested it on correct. From the examples that they'd collected, that machine learning model that they had trained had learned that uh, thriller novels often have large, bold, sans serif fonts with the author's name. It had learned that sci-fi books are often dark with space or night sky on the cover. It learned that romance books are normally light with pastel colors and elaborate fonts. But this class uh, aren't the only ones interested in this. There is a load of AI research going on, trying to understand the capabilities of computers to recognize artistic styles. And if computers can learn to recognize styles, whether or not they can create new artistic works themselves. AI can also be used to train a computer to recognize handwriting. So this class uh, were training a machine learning model to recognize letters, to recognize handwriting. Specifically, they wanted to train a computer to recognize how they write postcodes, um, what I think you call zip codes. So they collected examples of how they would write the first couple of letters of a few common postcodes uh, in the UK. And with enough examples of each, they'd made a simple machine learning model that could recognize the way that they write these letter patterns. And they used this in Scratch to make something that could sort letters. So you write a postcode on the envelope, you click on the stamp, and that machine learning model that they trained uh, recognizes what you've written, and it sorts the letter so that it goes on the right van. Now imagine that what they'd made, uh, you know, imagine that they'd used uh, examples of not just the first couple of letters of a postcode, but the whole postcode. Imagine that they trained it not just to recognize a few types of postcode, but they trained it to recognize all of the postcodes in the country. Uh, imagine they trained it not just with their own handwriting, but the handwriting of lots and lots of people uh, with different handwriting styles, writing the postcodes in slightly different ways. Well, that is actually getting close to how a lot of large postal offices sort our mail. AI systems trained to recognize the writing on envelopes that are automatically able to put the letter on the right conveyor belt, allowing us to sort letters and packages far faster than we can do with people alone. This class project uh, was based on uh, the, the Where's Wally books. Uh, I think you call them Where's Waldo. Um, now they used the Scratch Cat instead of the, the Wally character. But what the idea was um, to be able to make a Scratch game that can make a Where's Wally game, you know, uh, pick a random background, pick a load of cartoon characters and shuffle them around. And could they train the computer to be able to spot where the Wally Scratch Cat is? So that meant collecting training examples. So they used a scratch game to collect the examples. Uh, they made a scratch game that, that made a random scene, shuffled the characters around, picked a background, and then they clicked on an example of where Wally is to train the computer to recognize what that looks like. And they clicked on an example of somewhere without Wally so that the computer could be trained to be able to tell the difference. After doing that a bunch of times, they'd collected examples of Wally in different scenes, uh, different sizes, in different poses, facing different directions, with different backgrounds and so on. And that was enough to teach the computer to be able to play Where's Wally. The computer had learned enough so that if you take any new scene, you cut it up into bits, you can ask the computer whether Wally is in each of these squares. I mean, once the machine learning model has checked every square in the scene, you would know where Wally was. Now this idea of taking that ability that I showed before, that computers can learn to recognize what's in a picture, uh, and that ability combining it with uh, image pre-processing, you know, taking a big picture and cutting it up into a grid of small bits uh, and checking with the machine learning model of what's in each bit separately, that's a very common use of AI. Um, for example, in 2015, during a major drought in California, the state needed to be able to do a quick survey of the water usage across the state. And they used this technique. They took satellite imagery of the whole state, they cut it up into grid squares, and they trained a machine learning model to be able to recognize what was in each square. 
Now they were interested in land use that affects water usage, so they were interested in spotting lawns and swimming pools and so on. But the point is they were able to get the answers that they needed far faster than if they tried to do it manually. They trained an AI system to learn how to recognise what they were interested in by giving it examples, and then they set that to work analysing the entire state. So AI can mean uh, training computer to recognise a picture of an object, uh, to recognise artistic styles, to recognise writing and letters, and if you combine it with pre-processing, to be able to find objects in a bigger scene. Hopefully I've given you a taste of what artificial intelligence is capable of and how these systems are trained. More importantly, hopefully you're starting to realise that these systems are already all around you whether it's the spam filters that learn how to recognize spam emails so they can keep your inboxes clear, or the recommendation engines that learn what movies or songs you might like based on what you've watched and what you've rated in the past, um, or the translation engines that learned from documents that were translated by people so that they can translate between languages for you, or your mobile phone keyboard that can predict what you might want to type next because it's learned from what you've typed before, and many, many more. We are all using AI systems every single day. And that is only increasing. We're finding more and more complex tasks that we can train computers to help us with. You know, we're training computers to be able to drive the cars and trucks on our roads. We're training computers to be able to help our doctors in the diagnosis and treatment of some of our worst illnesses. I hope I've given you a clearer picture of what AI is, um, how it's used, and a bit of an insight into how these systems are made. Thank you very much for listening.